Mr. Secretary, we've heard in recent days the President and the Vice President both talk about the lack of any successful attack in the past seven years. You reiterated that again this morning. What is the message here? What are you trying to say? Well, the message is certainly not to be complacent. <clears throat> in fact, we're going to be on guard until you know, January 20th when we turn the baton over to the new administration. But I think the message is that what we have done, although there's been cost involved and inconvenience involved, has worked. And that means that the American public has to continue to support the efforts we've undertaken if the government is going to be able to continue to afford the kind of security we've been able to provide over the last seven years. Is this a matter of good preparation, good response to 9-11, or is it partially good luck? I think it's, it's a lot of things. It's taking the battle to the enemy overseas. <clears throat> so the enemy is on the defensive instead of on the offensive. I think it's much better intelligence collection and integration. And I think it's, frankly, a lot of our preparation here at home. It's tougher to get in uh, with phony documents. It's tougher to get in between the ports of entry. Uh, we've got much better security systems at the border and at the interior. And all of these things uh, taken together create a network of defenses that is far superior to anything we ever had prior to 9-11. There's a debate as to how lethal Al Qaeda, central Al Qaeda, is today and whether or not Al Qaeda is even capable of a large-scale plot where operatives are injected, where it's financed and planned from Pakistan or wherever. Uh, what is your sense of that, and what is the real threat? A big attack by al-Qaeda or an inspired attack by a lone wolf? Well, I think we have to look at the whole spectrum of threats. <clears throat> Obviously, if we look at what happened in Mumbai, we saw a terrorist group uh, capable of managing a very successful and quite sophisticated assault that lasted over a long period of time. Uh, we know from the airline plot in 2006 that there was the potential for a plot comparable to 9-11. But at the same time, we have to work with our state and local partners to look for the lone wolf or even the small cell that attacks simply because it's inspired to attack. And unfortunately, there's not a, a one-size-fits-all solution. We have to be able to do all of these, deal with all of these threats at the same time. In trying to prep the incoming Obama administration, a, a number of tabletop war games essentially have been planned. What is your list of things that they need to worry about? I think the most important <clears throat> thing you want to consider, at least initially, is what is your immediate response in the wake of an attack? What do you do to figure out how to prevent any follow-on attack? What do you do to stabilize the, the situation in terms of medical issues and uh, diffusing bombs? Uh, essentially, the integration of a prevention strategy and a response strategy, which is at the very core of what our department does. We integrate everything from protecting us at the border to responding through FEMA. And managing that is, I think, the most important lesson which new people can learn. How do you download all of those lessons and all the preparation that's necessary <clears throat> in a matter of weeks? Well, well, the good news, Bob, is that we have a senior group of career professionals who are in place at all the operating elements of our department and really across the government. So the capability and the know-how garnered over years is ready to be deployed by the new leaders of the, my department and the other departments. What we can do to the, with these individuals is give them some insight as to how the process works and get them thinking about what they would do if on day one or day two there were an attack. Now, obviously, they're going to have their own experiences, but they come in with good backgrounds and a lot of skills. I think they've got a good base uh, of knowledge from which to work. And I think with our tabletop and the career people, uh, they're going to be as prepared as they can possibly be. And let me just ask you finally, uh, the inauguration is coming up January 20th. There are predictions we could have two to four million people. How do you prepare for that, and how concerned are you about trying to secure an event that large? Well, we're, I am very focused on the inauguration. I'm concerned about two things. We're worried about security, obviously, and that's something we've dealt with before in inaugurations and other similar events with the Secret Service and the military. But I'm also worried just about the large number of people coming into the city. Uh, I want to make sure that we're working with the governors and the mayor to assess are there adequate lodgings, is there a good transportation plan? Are we prepared if there's some kind of frustration on the part of people who don't have a place to stay? I mean, these are nuts and bolts issues which are very important. So the inauguration becomes a celebration and not, not an opportunity for people to find themselves in a bad situation. Thank you.